on helping us just to observe the crowd. If we don't want the authorities to come in and observe us, it always works to help us observe ourselves. We kind of like do self-care and remember that we're all part of a community. And if you're noticing people that are under stress, you know, give them a little extra, you know, bump and see what's going on. Uh, as we proceed through the day, and we can like speak more directly over at Richard Park at People's Assembly, if folks begin to consider some form of direct action, up to any sir, you know, anything. Um, there are some of us who have had no expertise, but some background in nonviolence training, some background in like different forms of direct action, nonviolent, 
creative, direct action. Uh, I believe players, one person. And there are probably yeah. others among you that can come forward and identify yourself. <laughs> yep. If there are those in this crowd who've also been involved in training or have done actions, we, you know, like Claire, myself, Joe, back here, Zachary, you identify just to, you know, make yourself known and come and let's talk about it. Let's see what we can do. Uh, we can go through any one of a number of levels of helping people organize into, you know, effective entity groups, consider different directions they may want to go, help you understand the consequences of your actions, and things like that. So come see us, you know, if you just have simple questions or if you simply say, I want to do this. Try to be as much of a feedback and sounding board for you as anything. Thank you. And may I make one suggestion? We have, we will meet people who are going to try and resist against what we want. They're either closed-minded, they don't want to believe, they're frightened, or they're paid to disbelieve. Only way we can defeat them is not by yelling at them, not by getting angry with them, but by blowing them a kiss, offering them a hug, and saying, we're here waiting on you. We can sign to wake up, come join us. Yeah. Kill them with kindness. Yeah. 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 No, they can't touch us.
I'd like to speak for a moment about the extreme importance of nonviolence. I speak this way as a Vietnam veteran. I forgot my cap, but uh, I went over to Vietnam. I was raised in the service. My father and my parents were Pearl Harbor survivors. So I was pretty steeped in the traditions of protecting and serving our country. By the time I got into Army Aviation School, I had a change of mind since I was only 19 years old. Volunteered and wound up serving in Vietnam as a helicopter ambulance pilot, which I'm very grateful for. They trained me in gunships, volunteered to fly medevacs, and that's what I got to do. I saw incredible violence. I saw the entire spectrum. When people talk about nonviolence, it's so important. You know, we had an era, we saw this emerge uh, during the Civil Rights Movement. Martin Luther King and what he got from uh, uh, developed from studying Gandhi and throughout history. And it's very, very important to, for us to realize that we're moving to the next level. Now, we, we were trying to protect ourselves against communism, which was a, a, a violent uprising of socialism. It still scares me, the red fist and that kind of stuff. We're moving to a level where hopefully we're all going to look out for each other and we're all going to come from a place of love. The only way we're going to show that is to hold our temper. The only way we're going to show that is to be the spiritual warrior that we need to be. And that means nonviolence. That means love. That means taking our inspiration from those brave spiritual warriors of the civil rights era. I feel very strong about this. I feel like I've made enough sacrifices for my country. I didn't serve in Vietnam, nor did my brothers who died, for purposes of bolstering and upholding the corporate society. Common American people, when you look the world over and you see what's going on, you see the war going on, you see us continuing to not having learned what we should have learned in Vietnam, you see the average people like us, they may speak a different language, they may have a different culture, they may have different religion, but they just want to get by. They want to eat, they want to survive, they want to grow in love, raise their families, have a productive, creative life. And we're trying to do the same. So I think it's important for us to realize that this is an evolutionary process and we all have this wonderful time to be on this planet at this time and serve in the way we're called to serve. And I'm calling myself, as well as all the rest of us, to just remember our ideals. And if we face aggression or anything, to just keep our heart, keep our spiritual warriorship in a place where we're at a level where we, we can see the greater picture and we can, we can keep, keep calm and we can keep a loving space, because that will be the true test of our individual growth and all this. Right. Violet Thank you. Thank you I would like to uh, add to that, because uh, you're so right. Uh, when Tom Dallas came on the scene, uh, and then right after uh, the Civil Rights Movement, Right in that year was the peace movement, the war, uh, 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 peace movement against the war. And I tell you, it took them about 20 years to learn how to clamp down on nonviolence because they were so used to violence over the years. So if you rise up against them, for instance, like uh, the SDS or the Black Panthers, uh, they knew how to crush that. But when you rise up nonviolently, they don't really understand that language because it is of the spirit. And I work with uh, I work with everybody, and some of the comments have already been said that we do have to use that powerful word, which has been so abused in this society. But it has always and will always be the same thing, and that is love. So, you know, uh, I have a confession. I do work with Tea Party folk, 
because they were all, they were formerly the Christian coalition. And I, I'm a chaplain, so I work with the moral majority because their eyes are the ones that's blind and they cannot see nor hear. And they take it from the King James Virgin, but I also have read that and I also look at 2012 and many other holy scriptures and understand that when that scripture says in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, most Christians don't understand that. And we need to understand that. In a moment, in the twinkling, that third eye will open and you will see all truth. And that's what it means. That's the rapture, baby. And that is the day that 300 million Americans will say, no, I won't work for you anymore. I won't work for you anymore. I won't work for you. I'm not going to work anymore. You see, and it will come through the spirit. And that's what we are looking for. So I'm not worried. I'm not afraid because I know that if they kill me, a thousand more will rise up. Yes, sir.